Chapter 59 The Header Moroni continues with the account of John. The death of the Lord is given according to the account of John. We are commanded to concentrate on the words of Jesus and not on his death. 1. And now I return again to the account of John, so therein ye might read of the death of Christ and his resurrection that ye might have joy in him, and what he was commanded to do by the Father, who loveth us all, yea, even every one of us equally. 2. And it came to pass that after Jesus had spoken these words, which were his last words unto his disciples in the flesh, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where there was a garden, into the which he entered with his disciples. 3. And this garden was the secret place of hiding for him, because of the warrant for his arrest that had been obtained by the high priest of the church at Jerusalem. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples, of which Judas was one. 4. And it came to pass that Judas went unto the high priest, and revealed unto him where Jesus and the other apostles were hiding. Judas then, having been paid the money, received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, went thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. 5. And they were led by Judas to the place of hiding. And when they came into the garden, Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. 6. And as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, the apostles went backward, and fell to the ground, taking with them by force Jesus also to the ground, that he might not be discovered among them. 7. But Jesus stood upon his feet, and said again unto them, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. 8. And this he said, that the same might be fulfilled which he spake, saying, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. 9. And Judas drew close to the Lord, and kissed him on the cheek, which was the sign he had given to the priest and the soldiers, who were there to arrest him, of which among them was the Christ. 10. And as they came forth to take him, Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the servant of the high priest, and cut off his right ear. And the name of the servant was Malchus, who was later converted unto the Lord by the apostles, after he had received the Holy Ghost, and who was stoned by the Jews for apostasy. 11. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, and do not sin in your anger, by keeping me from doing the will of my Father. And remember, as it is written, that he who liveth by the sword shall by it die. Behold, the cup which my Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? 12. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, who was the high priest that same year. 13. For Annas wanted to behold the man who had caused so much contention and confusion among the Jews, and who had said that the church of God among them was corrupt, and that unless the people repent of their sins, and follow not their leaders, but follow God, they would perish with their church. 14. And Annas was a great and powerful man among the Jews, who dealt with the Romans in all things, and arbitrated that which the church needed from the Romans, according to the needs and the wants of the church of the Jews. 15. Now Caiaphas was he who gave counsel to the Jews, that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And he was also that high priest to whom went Joseph, the brother of Jesus, and who received the thirty pieces of silver that Joseph had given him because of the miracle that Jesus had wrought being in the employ of their father Joseph, and who then paid this money to Judas, who had betrayed Jesus. 16. And it came to pass that Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple, even Nathaniel, who was a learned man and revered and respected among the Jews because of his learning. 17. And Nathaniel was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest, but Peter stood at the door without, 
Then went out Nathanael, who was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, that she would allow Peter to also be brought in with them. 18. But Peter was afraid, and dared not enter therein with Nathanael and Jesus. And when the damsel that kept the door said unto Peter, that he might be let in with them, Art not thou also one of the disciples of this man? He saith unto her, I am not. 19. And the servants and officers who had brought Jesus into the palace stood there and had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. 20. And the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine and why it was that Jesus was hiding and preaching in secret among the people. 21. Jesus answered him saying, I spake openly to the world, I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me of my doctrine? Ask them who heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. 22. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? 23. Jesus answered him, saying, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil which I have spoken. But if I have spoken well, why smitest thou me? 24. Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest, and he was knocked to the ground, because his hands were tied, and he could not catch himself. 25. And it came to pass that Nathanael stood forth boldly, and defended Jesus to the high priest, according to his knowledge of the law of Moses, and the law of the church. And he confounded the high priest in all of his words. 26. But the high priest had the hearts and the minds of the people. And when he became angry, because he could not stand up to the defense which was given by the mouth of Nathanael, he commanded that Nathanael be cast out from among them, and cast off from the church for ever. 27. And in this thing Nathanael did rejoice, and said unto the high priest as they led him out from among them, And what need thinkest thou that I have of this church, and the wickedness that is taught herein? I need not the church or its leaders to assure me my salvation. For God hath sent his Son, and he is my friend, and in his words I have found my salvation. 28. And Simon Peter stirred, and warmed himself with the officers and the servants without. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? But Peter denied it, and said, I am not. But one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? 29. Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew, and Peter remembered the words of the Lord concerning his own betrayal, even thrice before the crow of the cock. And Peter ran from among them, and tore off his clothes, and wept exceedingly, because he had betrayed his friend and Lord. 30. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment of the Romans, and it was early during the time of the Passover. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, so that they might eat the Passover in righteousness according to their traditions. 31. Pilate then came out of the judgment hall unto them, and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. 32. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. For Pilate wanted nothing to do with Jesus, having been forewarned by his wife in a dream that he should have nothing to do with him, because he was a righteous man. 33. But the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, for death is what the Jews sought for Jesus, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die saying, Behold, by the hands of my friends shall I be betrayed, and by the wicked delivered into judgment, and by the hand of a stranger shall I be slain. 34. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? 35. Jesus answered him, saying, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? 
thirty six. Pilate answered, saying, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? thirty seven. Jesus answered him, saying, My kingdom is not of this world, but is the kingdom of my Father. Behold, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight with the sword, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. For this is how the kings of the earth defend their kingdoms. But now is my kingdom not from hence, but from heaven, which is where my father dwelleth. 38. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, saying, Thou sayest that I am a king, because thou hast heard these things from the Jews. And thou sayest that thou art not a Jew, therefore how can I be a king unto thee? But thou art my brother because of my father, and it is he that hath made me a king. 39. But to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth, which I have received from my father. Every one that is of the father heareth my voice, and findeth truth. 40. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom, that I should release unto you one at the Passover. 41. And this was the custom that the Romans allowed for the Jews, even that in remembrance of the Passover, which was that day in which all the firstborn among the children of Israel were saved by an angel of God, that they would release one unto them who had been convicted of a crime. 42. And this the Romans did to pacify the Jews and keep them under subjection to them. And the Jews were fulfilling the portent that was given at the Passover, even that the firstborn of the father should be killed among them, and they knew it not. 43. And therefore Pilate said unto them, Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And this he said to mock Jesus and their customs, and also to gain popularity among them. 44. Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. 45. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus, and scourged him according to their customs. And the soldiers mocked Jesus for saying that he was the king of the Jews, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him exceedingly with their hands. 46. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns, and the purple robe. 47. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold, the man who is your king. And when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. 48. And Pilate was astounded at their anger and vengeance towards Jesus, and saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him according to your law, for I find no fault in him that he should die by the hand of a Roman. 49. The Jews answered him, saying, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid because of the warning that he had received from his wife. 50. He went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer, for Pilate had scourged him, and mocked him in the answers that he had given him before. 51. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? 52. Jesus answered him, saying, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above by my Father. Therefore fear not for that which thou hast done, and that which thou must do. For they that delivered me unto thee hath the greatest sin. 53. For they have heard my words, and have rejected them. But thou hast not heard my words, therefore the law hath not been given unto thee. And if thou hast not heard the law, then the punishment that is affixed to the law cannot be required at thy hand. 54. But woe unto them that have heard the law, and have rejected it. But thou art also my brother. Therefore I give the law of the Father unto thee. 
even that thou art commanded by the Father to love thy neighbor as thyself, and do unto them what thou wouldst have them do to you. This is the law of the Father, and the law which these have rejected. 55. And Pilate answered Jesus, saying, If this is the law that thou teachest, and it is the law of thy father, and it is thy father who hath made thee king over this people to give them this law, then surely it is they who have sinned. 56. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, because he believed in the word of Jesus. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not a friend of Caesar, and thou art not loyal to the law of Caesar, for thou believest in another king and another law. And whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. 57. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth, and sat down in the judgment seat, in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew Gabbatha, and it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. 58. Behold, this man doth not teach the law of Caesar, but he teacheth a law by which ye should abide, and ye shall have peace among you. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. 59. And Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king who giveth a righteous law to you, according to your customs and traditions? And the chief priests answered, saying, We have no king but Caesar. 60. And in this the Jews spoke the truth. For behold, their king was the same king who ruled over and directed Caesar, even Satan. 61. Then delivered Pilate him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a burial, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side one and Jesus in the midst. 62. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin according to the command of Pilate that all might understand his words. For Pilate truly believed on the Christ, even though he did not understand all things concerning him. 63. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered them, saying, What I have written, I have written. 64. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat they did want as a souvenir. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout, and could not be torn. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be. 65. And this came to pass, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did, not knowing of those things which were written concerning him. 66. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and the sister of his mother, Mary, who was the wife of Cleophath, and Mary Magdalene, one of his wives. 67. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, even John, from whose account this record is taken, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. 68. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother, honour her as I would have honoured her, that her days may be long before God. And from that hour John took her into his own home, and cared for Mary, because she had left her husband Joseph and her other sons because of their wickedness. 69. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon a hyssop branch, and put it to his mouth. 70. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, Now it is finished, even that which I have been given to do by the Father. And I have given unto the world of the cup that the Father hath given unto them through me. 
even a cup of pure water that shall quench their thirst for ever. 71. But I have received from them a cup of vile water, from which I receive no relief from my thirst. 72. And when the centurion heard these words, he took his spear and pierced the side of Jesus, that he might no more speak such things. 73. And in his agony the Lord cried out in pain, My father, why hast thou forsaken me in the greatest hour of my need? And after he had bowed his head for a short time in prayer, he raised his head for the last time in the flesh, and smiled upon his beloved wife Mary, and said, It is done, now go I unto the Father. And with these words came his last breath, and he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. 74. And now, I Moroni have read the account of the brother of Jared concerning the death of the Lord, and many of the other things that occurred concerning those things that led up to his death, and those things that transpired at the time he gave up the flesh, and entered again into the spirit world. 75. But of his death the Lord hath commanded me to write little. For he knoweth that those of the latter days worship him because of his death, and not because of those things that he taught to the people. 76. And the Lord would that ye should understand that his death meaneth nothing, except that the world had rejected him and killed him for that which he taught. 77. But his words are that which the Lord would have his people remember of him. For in the death of Christ there is no life, but only death. But in his words there is life eternal. End of chapter 59.